What's up everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mike Versperl, and for today's video, we're gonna jump on my computer and I'm gonna show you guys some pictures I took of the Milky Way Galaxy using my Nikon Z7 and the 14 to 30 millimeter F4 lens. That's right, you heard me correct. I shot these with an F4 lens and I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks on how to create a cleaner night image, even if you have a slower lens like this. So stay tuned for that. All right, so here we are on the computer side of things, and this is a single raw photo taken with a Nikon Z7 and the 14 to 30 millimeter f4 lens. Now I shot this wide open at f4, shutter was 15 seconds, and my ISO was 10,000. And you can see it's still a little underexposed and it's heavily vignetted, so I could fix all that up, so I'm not too worried about it. And if people are wondering why I shot at 15 seconds, and sometimes I even do 13 seconds, that's just to kind of help prevent some of the stars from trailing too much. I noticed that 20 or even 25 seconds is just a little too long for my liking, and these stars become really egg-shaped, so I'm trying to avoid that by using a shutter speed around 15 seconds. Now the ISO I had to crank up to 10,000 because this lens only goes to f4 so I was not gathering enough light with the lens and I had to use a higher ISO. Now if I jump to this photo uh, I did a little bit of noise reduction and a little sharpening and then I fixed the vignetting and raised the exposure and as you can see if we zoom in it's uh, not too bad there's still a decent amount of grain in the sky but the worst part of it is the foreground if we zoom in around the tent, you can see the colors of the tent just bleed out into the rest of the image. And that's because this was shot at such a high ISO. Uh, it's also hard to make out some of the detail, like the logo on the tent. Um, you can't even read what that sign says back there. So one of the things I like to do to easily clean this up is just take another long exposure for the foreground. So if I jump over here, that's what I have this uh, 293 second shot at f4.5 just to increase some of the corner to corner sharpness and this was taken at ISO 1000. So if we zoom in here you can see there's a lot more detail and it's obviously very clean compared to the other image taken at ISO 10,000. I can almost read what that sign says. You can see the logo, the colors of this tent are not bleeding out. So this is much better and it's very easy to blend this photo with the sky and just you know do that little extra step to clean up your night image so i'm going to grab my sky photo and my foreground photo and go to edit in open layers in photoshop now if you have affinity you could do this as well or any other program that allows you to create a mask all right, so we have the two images in Photoshop now, and I'd like to work with copies, so I'm just going to copy them. And then for the top layer, I'm going to create a mask by clicking this icon right down here, Add Layer Mask. And we're gonna use black to paint, and this is going to reveal the layer underneath. So I want to change my hardness to 100%, increase the size of the brush, and my opacity at 100%. Let's go a little bit more. I'm just going to paint away the sky. As I get closer to the foreground, I'm going to change the hardness a little bit and lower the size of this brush. Also lower the opacity down to 75%. You can zoom in here and make it a little bit better. All right, so I'm gonna leave it right there. You get the idea. And one of the reasons why it's so easy to blend these images is because I didn't move my tripod. I already knew the composition that I wanted and I kept everything in the same spot. So it's very quick and easy to do. 
And this is one of my first techniques I used to use to get a cleaner night image. Now I still have a decent amount of grain in the sky compared to my foreground, but it's much better than just a single raw photo. So I'm just gonna save this out. All right, so here's a new image and I can proceed editing the sky a little bit more to make that Milky Way pop and stand out. But at least now the foreground won't get extremely noisy and uh, I have a lot more detail than I did with a single raw. Now that technique worked out for me fairly well until they invented stacking software like Sequator for PCs and Starry Landscape Stacker for Apple computers. Now with stacking software, it's essentially separating the sky from the foreground and it tracks the sky for you and then it stacks the images together to reduce noise and then it compiles them back together into one photo, creating a sharper and cleaner image. So it's definitely a great piece of software to have in your bag of tricks to create a cleaner night image. So for stacking software, you need to do a consecutive number of photos. So one right after another and typically around five to 10 images get you relatively good results. So I'm gonna use six images that I have here. And what I wanna do is just copy my settings from this image. And I'm gonna paste it to these other five images right here. Now I can't open raw photos in Starry Landscape Stacker. I have to use either JPEGs or TIFF files. So I'm going to export these as TIFF files. So go to File, Export. And I have a preset called Milky Way Stack and basically it creates a folder for me. Uh, the already TIFF images and the size and resolution. So everything's already preset for me. I'm actually gonna hit cancel though because I did this earlier just to kind of save some time and not bog down the machine while I'm recording. So I have my images right here in this folder ready to go. And we're gonna open up Starry Landscape Stacker. Go to that folder, grab my files. Now because it was taken at such a high ISO, the software had trouble distinguishing the sky from the foreground, and I have to remove a lot of these red dots that are in the foreground. So I'm gonna go to erase red dots and select a larger brush and just paint these away. Next, select Add Red Dots, and you just wanna make sure you outline the horizon. That's gonna help it separate the sky from the foreground. And just fill in any areas that are empty. That should be plenty. Next, hit Find Sky. And here you could fine tune the mask that it's going to create. Switch to ground if you have some sky that's hitting the ground. All right, that's good enough. Next, you want to hit align and composite. Now there's a couple different options in here. I like to keep mine on mean, min, horizon noise. That seems to give me the best results that I like, but definitely experiment and see what you prefer. And you can zoom in and see the results that you got. As you can see here, it's a lot cleaner. I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison from this stacked image uh, compared to a single raw image. So once we're done with that, hit save. And I'm just going to save mine to the desktop. And then you can jump back to Lightroom and bring it back in, which I already did earlier. So I have my stacked image right here. Now you can proceed to edit this if you want, or you could take this a step further. But first, let me show you guys a comparison between this and a single raw image. All right, so here we are one to one and you can see a lot of this noise is removed in the sky, but the stars are still sharp. And if we scroll down to the foreground, it cleaned this up nicely. It brought back some detail and removed a ton of noise. So it looks really good. Now, I still have some of this green bleeding out of this tent, which I could fix either in Photoshop 
or I could fix it another way, which I'll show you guys. But I just want you to see how good stacking is compared to just a single raw image. So I'm gonna hit done. So as you can see, stacking did a fantastic job, especially in the sky, and it also cleaned up the foreground quite nicely compared to a single raw. But I want to show you guys the foreground compared to a long exposure foreground taken at a lower ISO. So let's compare these two images next. Ignore the white balance difference. As you can see, stacking did a great job, but it's still not as good as a lower ISO, longer exposure for the foreground. So we could actually take this a step further and take this nice clean sky and blend it with this foreground. So we're gonna hit done and I'll show you guys how to do that. It's pretty much how we did the other one. It's an additional step, you know, after you just finish stacking the images and then you have to blend it with a different foreground. But I think it's really worth it just to really clean that image up even further. So I'm gonna grab these two images, go to edit, open layers in Photoshop. And this is just like the first one we did before with uh, the single raw and the long exposure foreground. But now we're just using the stacked photo instead for the sky. So just like we did before, I'm going to make a copy, create a layer mask, grab my brush, and just start painting in the cleaner sky. I'm just doing this really quick and rough, but uh, that's good enough for that. So I'm gonna flatten. All right, so here's the final product to get a really clean sky with a nice clean foreground. I highly recommend doing a separate long exposure for your foreground and then blending it with your stacked sky. And it's gonna create absolute awesome results without using a star tracker. And now you can really start pushing and stretching this image out uh, to bring you know detail into that Milky Way and do your favorite settings. And if it reintroduces a little bit of noise, you know at least you have a lot more room to play with than you did with a single raw photo. So definitely try this out. Even if you don't have a Z7 and uh, the 14 to 30 f/4 lens, this will work with pretty much any lens you have. That whether it's fast or slow, I definitely recommend these techniques to be used. And uh, hopefully this helped you guys out in 2020 shooting the night sky and getting that clean, crisp, sharp stars, sharp foreground that you want. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Hey, hey you. Yeah, you. Before you leave, please hit that like and subscribe button. Also, if you want to support this channel, please check out my affiliate links down below. It's what I use and recommend. And lastly, be sure to follow me on Instagram where you can see pictures that I post when I travel for inspiration. And I sometimes do free giveaways. So check that all out. Thanks and goodbye.